Welcome one and all to Sentinels of Senior Year, a part of the Becoming Mighty and Morphin Paw Ranger universe. We hope that everyone is having a more phenomenal day as we hope to bring you a more phenomenal rest of your weekend. I am John McDonald, a.k.a. Panabon, a.k.a. Zordon, a.k.a. the Game Master for Power Rangers Centurion, and a whole bunch of other a.k.a.s, some of which you know and some of which you don't. Um, I'm excited to be here and continue the story and begin to give some answers to the trials and tribulations currently facing the Rangers. Um, and I will let them continue with the mortifying ordeal of being known by introducing themselves, starting with Jane Russell, our Red Ranger. Hi, I'm Jane Russell, the Red Ranger, um, also known as Elizabeth or Elizabeth. Um, I am, um, every Sunday I'm on Light Clockwork with uh, Panabon or Zordon as um, Drusilla. If that's Sorry. my real name. If that's my real name, you will never know. I'm not uh, convinced. <laughs> I wasn't expecting you to call me first, so everything just like blew out of my mind. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Great. Uh, you are also playing on Power Rangers Centurion, correct? I am. I am playing uh, Juliet Jules Verne on Power Rangers Centurion every other Wednesday. And you are on Well of the Worlds, I believe, on <laughs> I, am, I am. Every other Friday, I am on Well of the Worlds, um, playing a very, very cynical, very grumpy investigative reporter. And by the time you've listened to this live, uh, your Blades in the Dark Streamathon stream will have gone really well. And not just because I'm <laughs> I can hope that it's going to go hope. very well. I have um, I have a really neat idea for it, and I'm really hoping that the players um, enjoy it as much as I'm enjoying writing it. So I'm hoping to be murdered by a scabbard Jack the Ripper style, because that's what I think of when I think of it. <laughs> we will see. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Uh, speaking of Blades in the Dark, uh, you may not have a blade, but you can creep out of the shadows whenever you wish. Cecily Adwell, welcome. Womp, womp, womp. Um, yes, I play Cecily Adwell, the uh, historically obsessed Blue Ranger uh, who loves her chickens. And um, I am... Lottie Alla West, I work uh, traveling the country, uh, performing nerdlesque and nerdy drag at various anime and nerd uh, adjacent conventions. I'll be way past this, but I'll have been at C2E2. Um, I also help game design and play sometimes for various LARPs. Um, I'm gearing up to be working on... Uh, the second installment of Gala of Everlasting Change, which is basically Gay Fay Prom uh, with Cotty Womble uh, Productions. Uh, and I'm really excited to bring back uh, my Spring Fay and see what other kind of mischief I can get into. I love that. Um, I would love to do like Golden Con Burlesque with you for the Golden Girls. Oh, yeah. Like that would be a lot of fun. I. You know, me and Estelle Getty have the same birthday, and she's nice. like one of the only celebrities that I um, share a birthday with. So maybe in the future, we shall maybe. see. Perhaps. Speaking of things in the future, uh, we're in different time zones. So Eddie Thatch, technically in the future from me, even though we're in the same time, same place. Hello. Hello. Um, I play Eddie Thatch. Uh, my name is Patrick Bryant. I go by Jester in the Nerdy Circles. I am currently working alongside uh, Frag and Unicorn Games to do some things that are going to be coming out relatively soon. I believe by the time people will be hearing this, they should hopefully already be in print and out in the world. Um, we are working on a, so an update to the games of uh, the Undercity story progression from the previous tournaments that were played over Gen Con. And we are currently gearing up to have our third... Uh, uh, third tournament, which will be rehashing the um, storylines of the first and the second to be able to uh, introduce uh, new players to it and to basically start utilizing the online format for the tournament system um, a little bit more. 
Uh, I am also, by the time that this gets listened to, uh, probably would have already done the streamathon for Remolf Turnus. Uh, given that a shot this year, um, after I was very politely asked to join along, and I will be doing Malifaux through the breach with one of their Penny Dreadfuls and um, putting a little bit of English on it. And uh, man, I was just having a lot of fun this last week and just putting together characters and I ended up like a set of pregens and now I just have like a little family in my head. That's wonderful. I'm looking forward to listening to Rivers of Nightmare if I am if I can listen in his audience for that. Uh, because that's going to be happening right before like clockwork. So if we're in like clockwork, we can't actually be in Rivers of Nightmare. Uh, so I will be in the audience, if at all possible. I'm very excited about that. Me as well. Hmm. Speaking of a uh, speaking of a small family of um, friends, colleagues, uh, John Blair is here uh, as Britt Kerrigan. Hello, John. Hi, it's me, John Blair, Remel Turnus's resident Pink Ranger. Um, you are catching me here as Brick Kerrigan. You are also probably, hopefully, catching me as Felix Boucheron on Power Interest Centurion. Thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your continued support in my pink escapades. <laughs> Thank you for being a friend, Brick Kerrigan. All right, so there is no time skip for this episode. So if you were listening to this and you have not caught up, then please pause and catch up, but I will give you a brief rundown. Uh, so the Rangers had to find an unorthodox method to enter into um, the command center because for whatever reason, they could not as they usually did. So they ended up beneath the command center and what they found out is likely some kind of religious chamber who knows uh but they had to go up uh a ladder and through the grid lord library in order to get to alpha five and zordon who were frozen and there was a whole bunch of smoke in the command center and all that has been dealt with but as they were dealing with that they got word on Groves, the super cool social media app for Angel Grove teens that it totally exists in every universe and not just this one, um, that Ernie's juice bar was closing forever, exclamation point. So we return to the adventure from where we were. Ernie's is closing. My life is over. <sighs> I feel... I feel like business was going so well. Like, I don't really understand. But I mean, I'm not a business person, but. We just got the power center back. Now we're losing the other, you know? Maybe we should go and investigate what's going on down there, guys. Yeah, I mean, maybe, maybe we can talk to Ernie and see what happened. Uh, Alpha 5 says, aye, 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 before you go. And then Alpha, even though they are doing like three other things at once, uh, they, they hit that little special weird panel for the uh, view globe. Um, and the view globe shows a small contingent of teens outside um, Ernie's juice bar at, at the entrance. Uh, it seems like the, they, they either aren't going in or they can't go in. It's hard to say which. Hmm. Well, hmm. Are they like protesting or is it hard to make out what they're doing? It's hard to tell. Unlike when Rita screeches and you can clearly hear her in the viewing globe, this is just like uh, rabble, she, she, rabble, rabble. She projects. She does. Goldar also does project, uh, but he has more of a very tenor voice. Uh, by the way, out of out of GM, I guess, because I'm not a character, I'm the GM, like a character as well. Um, make sure to take a story point, because even though the adventure is continuing in one continuous thing, technically this is a new session. Uh, so please remember to take your story point, because those are very cash money and are very useful. <laughs> um, Thank you for the reminder. Yes. I, I just want everyone to know that John Blair is shaking their head at me about my use of the phrase cash money. <laughs> I just don't so, think it's that swag of a of a catchphrase. It's not, but it's my catchphrase and I like it. <laughs> it's not. But isn't that what makes it a swag catchphrase? Uh, no. It's okay. I just I wanted to match it with an equally 
not as good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so yeah, so here it, that is what you know thus far is that there are a group of teens in front of Ernie's juice bar. Um but you can't hear what they're saying because they're not projecting the way that you're supposed to project to the audience when the viewing globe is listening into you. Should we go down there and check it out? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Seems yeah. like the most pressing matter at the moment. We're still morphed, right? Maybe we should unmorph. <laughs> Uh, you are, you have all taken your helmets off unless you put them back on, if I remember correctly. So technically, except for Sand's helmet, you are morphed. Yeah, I'm not, there's probably not really like a putty situation down there, hopefully. So going stock standard should be probably fine. You can, uh, what you can do is when you teleport, there's an option to unmorph to demorph while you're teleporting so that you don't have to like demorph and then teleport. You can, you can do one like fluid motion. All right, cool. But the question is, where, where do you want to uh teleport to? The juice bar, just yeah, out of sight. There's a lot of people out there, though. So. Oh, right. We don't want to just show up. Yeah. 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 Did, did you, I was trying to be like, if you want to teleport into the crowd, you can, but you're like breaking. If we're going to teleport right. into the crowd, then we're going to want to do that morphed. Right. <laughs> oh, that's true. But there's no reason that the Power Rangers would be at yeah, Ernie's there is. farm. Ernie's is a community staple. And technically, you were there once, Brick. In that is true. I was. Costume. I yes. I have been to the to Ernie's morphed for sure. Uh, I mean, it's up to y'all. I'm. I'm just. I'm just here to move the storyline. What, what would you? You just have to figure out where you want to land, and if you want to be Rangers or if you want to be yourselves. Um. Maybe we can land like I don't know, like maybe um. A cut like a block or two away or behind a, like, in an alleyway of some yeah, sort. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, like in an alley somewhere. And then we can like yeah. walk there. <laughs> yeah, you can totally do that. Uh, and, and here is where I will ask is the bits to put in the teleportation noise that I don't have on hand. Overlaid with the unmorphed noise. If, if someone can, unless somebody can make it with their mouths for next to story point, uh, I, I will ask. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I think that was worth a story point for I'm, everybody that was yeah. involved in that. Yeah. So <laughs> everyone that was involved in that, please take a story point. Oh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm leaving that in, by the way. I think that's perfect. Just <laughs> <laughs> <Wow. laughs> right. call all of us basically mouth choices, which yep. I appreciate. It's a success in all accounts. Uh, you successfully, um, you successfully demorphed to, I'll give you a block away. There is a tire shop. Um, near Ernie's Juice Bar that can't seem to keep anything in it uh, shop-wise, a la Bob's Burgers. And so the alleyway is clean and nobody really notices you. Um, as you enter and head to Ernie's Juice Bar, where there is a contingent of people that are in varying states of distress, um, and you notice the doors are closed. Um, is there anybody there that we like recognize, like from school or anything? Uh, you recognize um, Alex's boyfriend. Judd is there. Uh, Bulk is there. Um, a couple of the girls' gymnastics team are there. Brick. Uh, they they usually practice. They use Ernie's as part of their practice routine. Um, Cecily, uh, you might notice a couple people in magical type outfits that usually use one of the upper rooms for magical practice. Um, Eddie, you notice someone in the crowd, but you can't let others know that you notice them because they're wearing an insignia for the secret group that you're part of. Um, so you can't even like nod at them. It's, it's this is there's a process <laughs> going on. Um, Double yeah. secret wink and shake. Gotcha, gotcha. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm going to uh, go up to bulk and ask him hey, what's going on. I, I don't know. He won't. He won't. He won't open the effing doors. Like he's just locked us all out. I don't know what's going on in there, but I'm 
I'm about ready to punch a door open is what I'm about ready to do. Well, don't punch a door open. It's going to be okay. Um, what am I supposed to do? Make my spaghetti and meatball sub at home? No, no, no. But I'm uh, sure first skull and now got... this. What uh, the skull? Oh, he's just busy. Something with something with his dad. It's not. It's not. This is the important thing. Focus, Eddie. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, are there any like windows we can look through? Uh, all of the windows are like, I don't know how else to put this. They're, they're frosted over. Like you can't look inside like you would normally be able to do. As in like these windows we can normally look in, but now they're frosted or they're. Yeah. Like normally the windows, like even if they're just ah. like the small slatted ones, they're all like tinted, not white, but like this kind of grayish color that keeps you, you think maybe he's eyes. like turning into a nightclub i don't know but something seems fishy about this he better not be turning it to bulk says he better not be turning it to a nightclub i already have enough trouble in this town <laughs> um what is like the group like the the group uh that's sort of outside of the juice bar are they more or less peaceful or is it starting to get like crazy or what's the what's the general vibe uh vibe? give me uh, uh let's see what kind of role i want to give you for general vibe <laughs> major indifference no it's um give me a persuasion role to feel the general vibe of the crowd 16 uh with that 16 uh you note that um a lot of people are really kind of feeling this. They're confused. Bulk stands out because of their anger, but that is always bulk. That seems to be their modus operandi. Probably not healthy. Um, everyone just seems to be waiting for either Ernie to like come out and make a decree to explain himself, or like a couple of people are posting online with conspiracy theories, but nobody's like actively doing anything. They're just feeling their feelings. Okay. So it's yeah. not like it's not like it could be a rioty sort of situation. No, no, there's no there's no giant uh giant clown people with wheels on their feet ready to stoke the fires of hatred again. Sure. Of that. Okay. Um I'm gonna turn to the group and ask if maybe we could like um maybe check. There's like a rear entrance to Ernie's, right? Uh give me a streetwise roll. Where's the streetwise Hercules? <laughs> Fight the rising now. Isn't there a 13 on that yes. roll? I bet that we do not. <laughs> we'll have to cut that just because we don't know the rights to Bonnie Teller's holding out for hero. I did enjoy that though. Thank you. Uh, with a 13, you do know there is a back door, like a back dock area as well. But there is also a window you could technically wiggle through um, that is attached to the basements. So there are multiple points of entry. You can't get into the courtyard unless you teleport it in, but that's just like an extra step to try to okay. get in. So. I mean, we could probably try and go through the... I'm going to turn to the group. Um uh, maybe we can try and sneak in through the basement window or through the back door. See what's going on with Ernie if he's oh. in there and if he's okay. Yeah, let's give that a go. Yeah, a nice uh, forceful knock. Let's go. Are you, are you forceful like, knocking on the front door, Cecily? Well, I, I was going to say, I think Bulk has got the forceful knocking down oh, to yeah. science. So let's try a more nuanced approach. Fair enough. All right. Uh, heading around the side of the building and to the back. Nobody's following you. They're just all standing at the front door. It's very apathetic, a little weird, but, you know, it's Angel Grove. I guess if you can get used to uh, giant clay people attacking every now and then, you get used to anything. Um, you get to the back door. You can kind of see through the little slot windows in the back. 
um, because the back door has those little sided window things next to the next to the dock with the roll cage that's down. But it is becoming difficult to see. Anyone want to try breaking the door down, or should we try wiggling through the window, or what? Whatever. So you said like a roll cage. Are we talking like a like a gate type thing, or? Yeah, so like it's one of those things where like when someone has a delivery and sometimes there's like a back dock area and you have to pull up the door and it's like a silver thing and makes the chunk 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 noise mm -hmm. that you get when you get like a one of those outdoor um yeah, roll cage thing goes up. Yeah. Um kind of thinking maybe give an attempt to wrench that open. Uh, give me a might roll to try to wrench open. All right. The back door. Here we go. Let's yeah. Go full hernia power. I mean, this is one of your skills. So Did you say hernia power. What? Yeah, yeah. Hernia power. <laughs> lift. Uh, li uh, lift with your with your. What is it? Lift with your My back, not with your. Uh, I, I think I think it's you're, you're lifting. No, it, it's it's all in the wrist. It's, okay. That's 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 fine. Uh, yes, how how's that my role going for you? <laughs> Hopefully, well. Oh my god, you tear the door off! Like, come on. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, that's, that's literally the highest value I could possibly get. That's a twenty six. That's that's amazing. That is what we call a critical success with that twenty six. So, uh, you weren't expecting to have any trouble opening the the dock bay door. Um, during working hours, uh, Ernie generally tends to keep it unlocked because sometimes um, people come in through the back. Uh, no one's ever stolen from Ernie because nobody's that stupid. Um, it's not trusting. It's just nobody's that stupid. Uh, Ernie's got connections, if you know what I mean. It's true. Um, <laughs> but also Ernie's kind of the heart of the teen community. In some ways, like he provides a safe space that doesn't really exist elsewhere in the city in a lot of ways, um, especially for lower income teens of Angel Grove. And Which is exactly why we need to rip this door open. Uh, so you don't have to. It does open. It is harder than you expected it to. And this is a little weird. It's really cold. Like the AC is on high and there are like little icicles on the bottom of the loading dock door maybe we shouldn't have put our street clothes back on well there's no one around that can see us right now i mean i'd talk now because i'm literally just breaking the enemy we should probably uh i i more th i, th I think she going. i think she means because it's a, it's it's cold in here yeah but that's also like this is this is feeling some like read a level crap. Yes. Uh, it's Rick, uh with that masterful chill performance, please also give me a survival roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, okay. Even with all that br breakfast, you've got no you've got no extra padding. Eleven. Uh I'm not gonna make you take uh take a snag right now, but just to let you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna be zesty about the cold, you're gonna start making survival rolls. <laughs> just to let you know, I'll no stop, bad I'll stop, yet. I'll I'm stop zesty. acting. I'll stop acting. Yeah, but it is it is cold though. Like like if you didn't bring a jacket, you're feeling like like it feels like someone has unnecessarily turned on the AC to full blast in winter. Um which is which is not very cash money. Not at all. <laughs> uh, all right, let's find Ernie before I, my toes freeze to freeze off. Yeah, I did not dress for freezing weather. Uh, SoCal is not Does exactly. No one else think that we should possibly morph. Like this seems rather suspicious. Oh, okay. I you want to take the you want to take the reins on that, Eddie. Yeah, sure. I guess I'll I'll be the bold, cautious one. Sure. Uh, Black Mastodon power. Pink Falcon power. Blue Unicorn power. Red T-Rex power. That's fabulous. It is indeed morphin' time. You morph into your power armor. Uh, you were just in your power armor, so it's actually just this really familiar feeling beyond everything else. Um, hey, it was so still warm. Kind of warm. 
That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Actually, uh, unless you have a perk for environmentally sealed, it warms you up a little bit, but you still kind of feel the cold through your shoe. So it's not it's not the end of the world, but like, man, you could maybe, if it's going to get colder, you could probably use a jacket through this thing. Do our helmets have thermovision? Uh, your helmets do not have thermovision. Unlike the Mighty Morphin Power Ranger movie, nobody's getting special scuba or thermographic vision enhancement in their helmet, unfortunately. No, it's always good to ask. Otherwise, you never know for sure. You never know what Elf is doing tinkering around when you're not wearing your suits. Um, I, I will note in the loading dock area, I don't know if you've kept the roll cage up or not, but it is uh, very dark. Um, there is some light, but it's not the overhead lighting of Ernie's that you're used to. It's uh, got a more bluish white tint to it. Um, does the back dock area go straight into like, is there like a door to go into the juice, like the front juice bar area or... Uh, what, is, yeah. what are what are our surroundings look like? Yeah, so you got the you got the back dock. You have a door right now um, that you can see in between some shelving. You can barely see the door because there's no real light on in here. Um, but that door uh, would go parallel to like the multi-purpose rooms. Uh, for for you, Eddie, having worked in Stone Canyon, you know that's where all like the gym equipment is kept. Um, when it's not being used on the floor. And then there's just this open area where the bluish white light is coming out from uh, that is uh, leads down the main hallway. And if you go down the end of the hallway, any hangar right, you've got the staircase going up to the second floor. And ahead, you've got the main juice bar area. All right. Um... I say we go and try and find Ernie. Yeah. Maybe we should check his office. Unless you think he would be somewhere else. Um, I think we should just look all over the place. But yeah, the office is a good place to start. Okay. Um, Ernie doesn't really have an office in so much as he has the whole of the juice bar as his office. Um, Never mind. <laughs> I will say as you begin entering into the building everyone please do give me a survival roll Radio. survival Oof, jane got a two. Oh. oh eddie thatch got a 16. rick got a th uh, 10. and cecily adwell got a three Jane Russell, you are going to have a snag uh, to whatever role you have next. Um, as you start walking down the main hallway, yeah, the hallway is getting iced over. There's like condensation on the wall, but the more you travel down, the more the more it's going from being Ernie's juice bar to being like Hoth, but only the outside scenes. Maybe we should see where this cold is coming from. So maybe we should follow that blue light. Yeah, I would agree with that. Get this cold under control. But I do want to find Ernie, though. And it's uh, definitely not ominous. Uh, by the way, you do, as you're going in the hallway, there are several closed doors on both your left and your right. Um, but it's no, I'm not saying that... There's no one... Now, I'm not saying I want this to happen, but if we find Ernie like frozen dramatically in the queue, what kind of face do you think he'd be making? Do you think it'd be like stoic or do you think it'd be like shocked and afraid? I'm, I'm stoic. thinking it would be like a brain freeze, but all over your body. Like if you drink a smoothie too fast and all of a sudden you're like. Uh, I, I will know for all of you viewers that Cecily did make the faith uh, <laughs> that she believes you you just can't see. You'll just have, have to envision it. We'll have an art contest for whatever kind of face you think um, Frozen Ernie would make. Uh, but you're going to keep going down the hallway. Is anyone trying any of the doors? Yes. Brooke is going to, I mean, we're, yeah, I'd like to try most of the doors that we pass. Uh, give me a might roll for the doors, Brick. 
You tell me I have to roll to do things. I got a 13. Yeah, I know. It's so, it's so annoying to have to roll to do things. <laughs> uh, so you're 13. You have a pretty good, cause you play baseball. So like your wrist is pretty worked out. You don't expect to have trouble with doorknobs, but it's not the cold. The locks have all frozen solid. As you start trying doors, like, you're going to have to hope Bernie's not one of these rooms, you guess. Does anybody have heat powers? Not anymore. Um, yeah, that was like a, a tied to one of the old weapons, wasn't it? I could, like, sing at it and maybe crack something. I don't know. I'm going to sing, like, a spicy island song and warm it up. I was going to, like, I don't know, hit something high, but... Uh, if you want to try to hit one of these locks for a locked door, if you tell me what, if you tell oh, me, oh, I'm what morphed. Like to... Can I shoot the door? <laughs> yeah, you're morphed. I mean, you, you, you have you have a blade blaster. You can use the blade of the blast portion right. of your blade blaster if you so wish. Right. The gloves are off. Pink's <laughs> yes. to shoot the doors yeah. down. Oh no, the gloves are on. That's how. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm gonna. Technically, you could blade it or you could blast it. Either way, really. Blast, please blast. Yeah, I'm blasting. Ah, oh, I love blading. I'm blasting. I'm blasting. Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, you shoot at it with your luck. Uh, I am going to take that opportunity by a stag down, Jane. You get uh, you get just out of the way as the the bolt of pink from. A uh, brick trying to shoot deflects off of the frozen. Um, what? They shielded the blast doors. Uh, but Jane, you get just out of the way, so I will not give you. I will not give you a snag. I'm using that snag for this particular uh, moment in time. So, yeah. So trying the doors is not a, an option. I think we can do. Yeah, we need to figure out where this cold is coming from, I think, before we can do anything else. All right, let's hurry. Yeah. If we see anybody who looks like Elsa, we know that we're in the right direction. <laughs> uh, wouldn't that have been nondescript, nondescript ice princess? What a twist. Or if it's once upon a time, descript ice princess. <laughs> um, so... When you think of the juice bar, you think of like that landing where all the people are usually working out in their gymnastic stuff or sometimes they're doing like physical stuff. Once there was like an improv group that was like using the floor space to try to make people do improv, which was a particular nightmare for at least one of you. Um, they kept asking for suggestions of places and nobody would take the Dollywood suggestion seriously, which was kind of a bummer. Uh, and so you're used to like neon, you're used to people working out, you're used to, you're used to everything but what you're seeing before you, which is a kind of main juice bar that is completely frozen solid. Like everything is frozen in the space. There was a reason you couldn't see through the windows. Um, and at the center of it all where the bar portion of the juice bar usually is is Ernie covered in white and blue blinking but but frozen everyone give me a survival roll because it's cold in here definitely not a paradise I am going to re-roll my two uh, using a story point because I that's fair same. Uh, I rolled a. I, I would like to re-roll uh, with a story <laughs> point as well. She That's what they're there one. for. I got Yay. Uh I will say, uh, if you wanted to save yours, Brick, your seven is enough. But I would recommend Cecily and Eddie. Uh, you can re-roll. She got a sixteen. That's much better. No snag for you. And Eddie Thatch went from a two to an eighteen. Yay. Yeah, All right, yeah, yeah. so no snags, but it's going to, I will let you know this out of character, uh, that every survival roll um, from this point on is going to be a little, a little, little more difficult because you're in the cold and you're not getting used to it and it's not getting 
any better. So the cold uh, does bother us anyway. Yeah, uh, because none of you have the environmentally sealed perk, which is a perk that you can't actually take. Um, I, I'm not chiding you, by the way. You didn't know this was coming, but like, <laughs> it's just one of those things where like, for people playing this game, that is a perk you can take called environmentally sealed. Doesn't work on lava, because that's like underground, but it works in most cases. Um, so there is Ernie um, standing there and... Assumedly frozen over? Hard to say. Um, I'm gonna walk. He, he said he can blink, right? Uh, yeah, he can. He can blink. Okay. I'm gonna walk up to him and be like, "Um, uh, uh, hello, citizen. Uh, are you in danger? Blink once for yes and twice for no. Ernie gives you the meanest, angriest lurk you've ever seen. You've never actually seen Ernie's face do this, and so you're actually a little taken aback. And Ernie just starts yelling. He starts on this tirade about chaos in Angel Grove, about being sick and tired, sick and tired of being scared, sick and tired of cleaning up after kids, sick and tired of Angel Grove. And as he starts speaking, his voice gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And just like out of his body, these snow people erupt. What? <laughs> Everyone, please roll initiative. So we're going to have to fight vomited snow people from Ernie? Uh, well, they weren't really vomited, ascent, uh, but yeah, yeah, that's, that's it, it what they're going it, to do. <laughs> it's a sound like, like they were erupting from him. I, I like, mean, it wasn't like, like a, they went. didn't, like, he didn't vomit them out. They, like, came out of his side like they were part of, like, a shadow or something. So vomited is not, you know. Um, all right, so Cecily, you got a nine? I did. Uh, Jane, we're not, uh, we've started combat, so it's technically a new scene. If you wanted to use a story point on that one, or you can keep that one if you want. It's up to you. I want to keep it in case I need to reroll something during combat. Okay, that's fair. Uh, I got, uh, Rick got a 19. And so did Eddie Thatch. Okay, oh, so because Bricks came in first, let's have Brick reroll first. Okay. I don't usually roll very well on initiative. I'm not going to make you do this because we haven't been doing this in this game, but if you don't have a skill level in initiative, you are technically supposed to do it with a snag. I'm not going to make you do it here because we haven't been doing it, but in Centurion that will happen uh, because I read that in the book and I hadn't uh, I hadn't read that before. So just so you know, so it doesn't surprise Felix, um, but if but for all the people that are going to be playing, if you're don't take points in initiative, you do do it with a snag because then you're quote unquote not prepared. Um, but also, who can be prepared for snow minions uh, appearing outside of um, the beloved Ernie's body, for lack of better terminology? Uh, Eddie, there are snow minions. What would you like to do? Um, I'm going to reduce the plurality of that word to the my best of my ability well, by okay. going, going up to one of the closest minions and uh, giving it an old boot to the midsection. Please give me that might roll. Three. Oh. That is not going to be to 15, which is their toughness. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, bear in mind, this is even a better die pool than what I used to rip open that previous door. <laughs> I got uh, I actually, with your three, I'm going to let you know you go to kick, but they're made out of snow, so now your foot is stuck inside the abdomen of one of these snow minions. Well, this is wonderfully awkward. Do you, do you say that aloud? Yes. Okay. Um, Brick? Uh... And he just tried to kick one, and now their foot is stuck. Yeah, Brick doesn't do a lot of kicking. Um, how many are there? Three currently. Okay. I'm going to target the two. Um, I'm going to target two of them with my volley shot skill. Great. 
I'm all for it. Cool. Volley shot. I'm going to shoot two of them. I'm going to target them. The ones that Eddie is not currently inside of, if I should be specific. Much appreciated. I assumed as much, but like, I'm also not going to tell you what to do. 18. Uh, 18 does beat them. Uh, I will say the unfortunate thing about this is that they have more than one health. So yes, you put a hole in both of them, but now they just look angry at you. Okay. Huh, usually that works. <laughs> uh, Cecily, it's your turn. So nothing's working thus far. Well, I took down one of each of their health points, I think. Yes, they've had bowls in them now. So like that's at least something. But but they just look angry now. So like it's anti Frosty. It, more like Jack Frost, but the Michael Keaton one where he was not the Michael Keaton one, the one where they were like actual evil snowmen eating. Oh, people. they were right. Yeah. That one. Well, I wanna use my blade blaster to at least try to get them sliced and diced a little bit. Great. Are you slicing um, the one where Eddie's foot is, or are you slicing one of the ones that Brick put a hole in? I'm going to do one of the ones that Brick put a hole in. Okay. Finish him off. There you go. Yeah. Probably not a bad idea. Maybe the hole will help, like preparation. Yeah, you know, that's science. That's how science works. It is a 15. Uh, You meet one of them, uh, which is great. Um, And as you slice it, roll me an alertness roll. And that's a 20. That's a 20. Uh, I will give you two things to be alert about, Cecily Adwell. Pick one or two. Two. Uh, You are alert that as you slice through this snow minion, Ernie's growing a ice shadow that looks like Ernie, but is made of ice, and it's very dark. Oh, um, that's... I'm going to, like, elbow over to... um, I'm probably closest to Brick, so I'm going to be like, uh, take a look at uh, little Jack Frost over there. That's not normal. No. (laughs) Concerning? Definitely. Uh, All right. So, Eddie? The snow minion that currently your leg is ensconced in is going to attempt to bite you. What is your toughness? Uh, A wonderfully high value, very thankfully. Let me double check what it is. My toughness is a 19. Uh, The snow minion gets a 7. So, like, it's not penetrating things. It's actually kind of cute, if you think about it. Um... Just don't think about it. Uh, Jane, one of the ones uh, that Brick hit is going to try to... Oh, there's no other way to put this. It's going to try to constrict you. Um, so it's basically going to grapple you. What is your toughness? 17. Oh, That's a 17. You are grappled by no. one of the snow minions. It um, Well, it hisses at you, which is fun. A chilling embrace. It's a chilling embrace, yes. Uh, you are next up to go, so you can uh, attempt to be degrappled by uh, using your own might, and you just need to get a 15 or higher, unless you want to do something else. No, I want to get rid of this little jerk. Um, can I use my heart of the team skill to give uh, Jane a shift of plus one to their next action? Always. Thank you. Cool. Uh, also, oh, shoot, a non-combat move, anyone can do. Well, you meet it, so it's fine. Okay. So that 15 is fine. Uh, also, there is a thing called lend assistance that anyone can do, I think, once a combat. Um, but yeah, can hard I, to team. Can I save that for my next roll then, since I forgot to put it in like a dope? Uh, yeah, I'll let you pocket that. That'll be fine. Uh, what, what do you say to this uh, weird sentient snow minion? Oh, I'm terrible at coming up with witty things to say on the on the spot. Um, as as um, she kind of like beats it off of her in a way, um, 
uh, she just kind of like uh, says, "I'm terrible at this." Um, oh, I got uh, one for you. I okay, yeah, you. yeah. What? Give, 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 give me. <laughs> Looks like your bark is not as is worse than your frostbite. Uh, 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 that's what Jane says. <laughs> your bark, <laughs> your bark is worse than your frostbite. <laughs> that's 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 fabulous. Thank you, thank you for that. Thank, you, thank you, thank you, Brad. Uh, back up to the top of the round. Everybody, give me an alertness roll, please. We're gonna nineteen. Jane got an eight. Uh, Eddie has a thirteen. Cecily got a three. Okay, so Cecily, give me a survival roll. 21! 21, that's fabulous. Uh, The cold's not bothering you anyways. Uh, Brick, one or two? And There is a table that has not frozen over in the juice bar. But it's far away, you can't quite see why. But it's not iced over completely and this this shadow that's on the floor is it moving towards anywhere or is it just emerging slowly it's emerging slowly not from the floor but it's it, it's emerging like it's like it's like a glacier coming out of uh coming out from behind ernie where a shadow would normally be um eddie it is your turn um, I am going to try to shove my hands in alongside like the sides of my um leg and kind of wrench open and try to get myself free. Alrighty, that sounds like a fun time for all. Um, I'm gonna have you roll finesse because this is more of an escape artist movement than it is a might movement necessarily. Because it's a snowman, so there's no, like, bones keeping you there. It's just the power of the snow. Uh, because you have forced me to roll finesse, I have a five. I'm not uh, very that, grateful. That five's not going to do it for you, although their evasion is lower. So if you've gotten a 12, you actually would have had a better better chance to get out. Uh, but, but yeah, so you're... Um, you're just kind of trapped in your own personal... How do you feel about snowman, Eddie Thatch? How do I feel about snowman? Yeah, just generally. Well, pr- prior to today, I felt rather good about them. Right now, I'm having second thoughts. Uh, how do you feel about snowman with giant icicle teeth smiling at you ghoulishly? Uh, pretty, pretty confident because the previous little nibbles he gave me didn't really feel like much of anything. Yeah, yeah, it's, I, it's probably a little unsettling for you though. I, I think it would be, it'd be unsettling for me. I'd say. Absolutely. Um, this whole thing is very much a realm of crazy wacky. Yes. Uh, speaking of realm of crazy wacky, uh, Brick, it's your turn. Um, is th- are the other snow minions? Are there? Are they still there? Or what's going on with them? Uh, they're still there. Uh, but one attacked Jane, and the other one tried to bite Eddie. So they've there's only three of them. So they've used their turn. Right. Yeah, they did. They didn't move. They didn't have any reason to move. Okay, so there's only two left. There's the one that tried to fight Jane, and there's the one that. No, there, there's Eddie three. The third in. one. The third there's one two. just didn't like. The third one just kind of like smiled with their giant ghoulish teeth. They didn't. They okay. didn't move. Um. Well, then I'm gonna try and shoot them again. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Uh, I. I'm hesitant because I have three volley shots and I'm hesitant to like use one on the one that is bless that bless you that Eddie is currently stuck in um, because I don't want to hit him. So I think I'm just going to play it safe. And I will say if you use two. your volley shot, uh, you won't hit Eddie because your volley shot is about marksmanship. So and and Eddie is really um, very what is the word I'm looking for? And um, he took a grill fork to the shoulder like a champ. He'll be fine if you should. And he wasn't even <laughs> worse then. <laughs> Are you trying to say I'm dense? Uh, you just do. You, you anyways, know. if you do, I just want to let you know, Brick, if you choose to shoot the one that 
is currently ensconced in Eddie's foot. She will not hit Eddie because volley shot is a marksman thing. So as long as your targeting succeeds, unless you get like a one, you're you're not going to hit Eddie. I don't think I will get a one. This would be the beautiful moment for that one. I, could you imagine? Okay, let's yeah, let's do it. Okay, fine. I'll shoot all three. Oh man, I literally got a one on the d twenty, <laughs> but a ten on the skill die. Yes, that's what the skill die is for. So you got a ten. So uh, with uh, with an eleven, you just are under their evasion. Yeah, so you they don't even move. Um, they're very aware of you now. You have uh, you have their full attention. Um, I don't know if you wanted that, but you now have their full attention, Brick. What's their uh, What's their strength? Uh, their strength. Oh, that doesn't 15. matter. That's their their roles, right? The role. Yeah. Deals with their, that. Okay. The strength is fifteen. Their evasion is twelve. So you have to meet one of those numbers. Um, they're not very smart. So you could try to do something with willpower uh, to get them to flee the field, but it, it's not. They're they're made of snow. They're just going to come back. And you're not going to let me re-roll that because that was a. Success. No, that's that's yeah, that's a success, and it's it would be too high for a story primary role. Um, Cecily, it's your turn. Yes, indeed. Um, hmm. Are who are they around right now? Uh, well, now all of them are laser focused on Brick, even the one that is uh, next to Jane and the one with Eddie's foot coming out of it. Well, I will also let you take a shot at an alertness check if you so wish. I would love that because I'm trying to figure out what the best course of action is. And maybe if I use my brain a little bit, it'll help. I got a 10. You got a 10. One or two? One. With a one, you see what Brick saw. There is a table that is not fully melted on the other side of the juice bar. Okay. Uh, so I want to check it out. I I feel like you should. I I'm gonna go give it a, I'm gonna go take a look see and dart over there to get get a see if I can get some insight on this different Sitting thing. At the center of the table mm -hmm. is a red marble that is keeping the cold at bay. It has something happening inside it, but you can't tell what it is, but it flickers like fire. That's ominous and scary. Um, can I inspect it some more? Sure, how would you like to expect it? Um, I don't wanna touch it, cause it could burn me. Um, I mean, okay, I'm going to touch it. I'm going to touch it. I'm going to make that choice. And if I get burnt, I get burnt. Uh, I'm not going to make a roll for this. It feels like a marble. Oh. In your hand. So if I like pick it up and I like bring it over, I could maybe like defrost Ernie. I, I mean, I'm not going to tell you what to do. It will take you. Um, you won't be able to do that this turn. That's, that's going to be the end of your turn. But you could do that next turn if you want. You're currently holding uh, that. The, so a skill check is picking something up is considered a free action. So you do still have a standard action left because skill checks aren't involved in actions. I know. I'm trying to like figure out what I could do over here. Um, could I blast a little bit at one of the guys while I'm standing there like with a little bit of uh, distance? Uh, no, that would be a standard action. That'd be action a standard action. Easier blaster, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, I, I think I'm just gonna shout over that I'm like, I found this really hot marble, and I think I'm not gonna do anything. Okay. Uh, snow minions. Uh, Eddie, give me a grapple, but not for the reason you think. Okay. So grapple, but for not the reasons that I think. Yeah. What makes you so sure that you know what I'm thinking? Uh, cause I, I, well, maybe you're thinking this, but give me that grapple roll and we'll see how things go. I'm assuming this is a might? Uh, yes, might is always grapple. Holy crap, eight. Yeah, so... I'm just a failure fountain number here. Well, no, no, see, the thing is, is that, um, uh, it's gotten progressively colder in the room, 
which means more ice. So your feet don't really have as much purchase as they had. Uh, One's inside a snowman. Yes. Unfortunately, the leg not inside a snowman is currently being dragged by said snow minion uh, because they're all moving toward brick uh, and brick. Uh, all three snowmen are going to attempt to bite you as they converge on you. So come and help you, buddy. Uh, but they get a three. So in their best ah, fight, ah. they all Goodness. kind of get in each other's way. Unfortunately, Brick, all three of them are now surrounding you, which I don't know if you've ever had any like snowmen based nightmares, but this definitely is up there. Mm hmm. Uh, and then Jane, it's it's your turn. Uh, Eddie has been slightly. Don't feel bad if you laugh a little bit because it's kind of funny looking. Eddie has been dragged over essentially to brick and is now like behind the three of the triangle of the snowmen. Um, Jane, give me an alertness roll before you decide what you're going to do. I got an eight. All right. Um, no alertness uh, for you. But what would you like to do, Jane? Okay, so I want to go over and I want to punch the snowman right. that has Eddie. Uh, okay, give me a might roll on punch because that's a blunt weapon. Um, so I have a question. Ever. While so the one there's one snowman that is still attached to Eddie, correct? Be, through like through his foot. Yes. So as that snowman was walking over to me, did Eddie have to like hop along? With it, uh, no, Hedy got Hedy got, got like, old, like sleigh style, like it was like an ice skating rink almost. Uh, I, I mean, I'm getting stretched in ways that I'm not used to. Um, so I'm gonna use my skill shift from Heart of the Team for this, and I would also like to, if if I roll high enough, I would like to use um, one of my power points for Power Strike. Great. So that will give me plus two damage on my melee roll. Okay. Do I need to add that into my roll at all or just add it in afterwards? Uh, you should have a skill shift up, like as one of your things where it would say normal, and then you should be able to see plus two on there. Okay. Right? So it would technically be a plus three because I'm using the heart of the team as well. Yes. 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 So, okay. Which sounds correct. 26. 26. That's yes. great. Um, for for plot reasons that some of us are aware of and others are not, you are um you are feeling really ready to defend Brick, uh, your friend and fellow ranger. And you hit one to get Eddie out of their predicament and your fist just like goes through one's head and goes like right through the one behind Brick as well uh, leaving one to Brick's side but um, Eddie uh, falls down now that you're no longer ensconced with, uh, with the snow minion which is super cool um, huh, super cool unfortunately as we go to the top of the round I'm not going to make anyone roll alertness for this um, the ice shadow of Ernie that some of you have been seeing has kind of completed their circuit, and uh, yeah, they're gonna uh form two more snow minions, and they have now entered combat. Uh, so Jane, good job on getting rid of those two snow minions. Unfortunately, now there are two more to deal with. Uh, Eddie, it is your turn. Uh, before we continue, I do want to say that Brick will. Brick wants to acknowledge Jane's. No, no, no. I just Brick wants to say thank you to Jane for for helping him. So he's going to say um, thanks for the save. First, I can't let them. I can't let them beat up on my team. All right. Um. I'm going to attempt to do like uh, Eddie Thatch has never done anything like this um, himself, but he's seen it on a few uh, movies and he's in morph mode right now. So he feels like he should be able to possibly do this. I'm going to try a kip up from my back to get onto my feet. Uh, you don't have to do anything fancy. Basically, getting up from prone is 15 feet of your movement. Um, 
So yeah, you you can get up. I'm not even gonna make you roll for that unless you right. really want to roll to do because it would be like an acrobatics roll to do like the fancy footwork to get up. So it's up to you can roll it if you want. I'm not gonna tell you now, but you don't yeah, know. I'm gonna do it. Okay. Well, that was a four. Uh yeah, it's getting icier in here. I want you to give me a survival roll, Eddie. That's what I get for wanting to be a little extra. No, I mean, I like that. I got a four again. Yeah, so it's getting real cold. Uh, you're going to have a snag on whatever you attempt to do next. All right. Um, so I get up uh, not nearly as uh, gracefully as I imagined. Um, uh, thanks, Jane. Or, no, wait. I don't want to. No. Uh, thanks, Red, for taking care of the two there. But. We got some more company coming out. And uh, can, can I still move or I utilized all of my movement for the get up? Uh, so getting up is 15 feet of movement. So it, you can subtract that to whatever you have for your movements. Would I be able uh, to close distance to an enemy and try to make an attack at this round still? Or am I um, not going to have enough action economy for that? Uh, I think you'll have enough action economy for that. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I'll give that a go. Um, this time, instead of a kick, I'm going to try a punch, and this will have the snag on it. Yes. And are you punching the one next to Rick? Are you punching one of the two ones the shadow created? Um, I'm going to go for the closest one, which I would imagine would be the one next to Brick. It is the one next to Brick. I got a 13. You got a 13. So you don't make contact but your fist is close enough that the snowman just kind of moves a little bit away from brick and so it's much closer to its snow family um so you you added a little bit of distance nothing nothing great but uh it was useful though yeah yeah there we go uh brick it is your turn instead of shooting all three of them i'm going to focus all three of my shots onto one of them if I do that, does my damage, like if I roll enough to hurt, to take one of their things away, health points away, would that take all of their health points away at, at once? Uh, yeah, if you if you do three shots and you're one shot successful, it's like all three are successful. So yeah. Cool. I'm going to try that. Yeah. Are you doing it on the one that Eddie just... Uh, maneuvered or are you going to try it on one of the two new ones or would you like to try to shoot ernie's ice shadow i don't know if i want to shoot the ice shadow while they're still okay wait no maybe i should because they're obviously he's the ice shadow is making them so if we just destroy them he'll the ice shadow will make more so and I it think, does have an initiative. It is an official enemy on the field now. So. Okay, I then instead I am going to focus all three of my volley shots onto the ice shadow. Great. Let's see if that does anything. Uh, yeah, go for it. I will let you know the ice shadow has a toughness of 16. Okay, in that case, I'm going to use a personal PowerPoint to use um, penetrating shot. When using volley shot and an amount of power points you determine, gain one or more edge on a single target. Great. Um, and so is edge just just an, like a plus one? Yeah, so edge is like advantage in D&D &D where to roll twice and give you higher of the two rolls. The shift up is the one. Is that skill shift? So it'll do skill shift, then you'll get difficulty, and then you'll have the dialogue option for um, what the edge will be in. Yeah. Okay. You, you want the skill shift because the edge will just roll it twice and give you the higher of the two numbers, and Snag will roll it twice and give you lower. So I do want to do a skill shift? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, you would look uh, because because it's not an edge you're doing. You're you're wanting to make it more powerful, right? yes yes so you want a skill shift so uh, skill shift if i just want to add a plus one to that i can yes that would be that would be the skill shift would be to add the plus whatever and i don't put an edge when it says edge snag or normal i should just put normal just put normal 19 
19. Uh, how many uh, shots were you doing on the ice shadow? Well, I have three shots in my volley shot, so I was going to do all three. Yes. Okay. Uh, so how much damage would that do total? So each shot does one point of damage, and then... Wouldn't it be just 19, like... If okay, so he has a toughness of what 18, you said he has a toughness of 16, but unlike DD, where like your damage increases based on how you power up your weapon, generally speaking, everything in essence 20 is going to do uh one point of damage unless you have a modifier on it that's going to make it do more. So, your volley shot where you did three shots at once, each one of those is going to be a thing of damage. I want you to roll targeting again. Um, okay. And that's going to act as your penetrating shot because your penetrating shot was supposed to give you edge. Uh, so you made it. So I just want to have you roll it again to honor the penetrating shot for your targeting. Oh, okay. That's why I asked about the yes. edge part. So I was wrong. It should have been both. Uh, but we're, I'm just going to have you roll targeting again um, to see if the edge would have been any use. Okay. <laughs> that's high. That that's a twenty-eight. Uh, congratulations! I think that's <laughs> actually that's. I think that's actually like as much as you could possibly get. Um, yeah, the ice shadow didn't like that. Uh, it's not down, but some ice is chipped away from it. I will give you this because of the greatness of that shot. Ernie does not even respond to his shadow being shot. Unfortunately, it is the ice shadows uh turn turn. Oh. And uh what is your willpower? I aggroed the boss. I'm sorry, guys. Um my willpower is not good. My willpower is 13. Great, 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 great. <laughs> that was a nine that Clutch. the ice shadow got. Clutch. Uh, would you like to know what would have happened to you? Actually, no, I'm going to leave it for a surprise because now the uh, now the boss is aware of you. Uh, but yeah, so especially it is your turn with a nine. You are across the room holding a marble in your hand. I've got this marble and I want to go get it over <coughs> to Ernie to try to de-thaw him. That is my plan. So will I be able to get over there in a turn? Uh, yes, you'll be able to get over there in a turn. It's it's the juice bar. It's not an endless ice cavern yet. It's getting there, but it's not an endless ice cavern yet. I will note that you feel warmer while holding this, as though it's keeping the ice at bay. So while you're holding this, you will not have to make a survival roll. That's good to know. I But I, I my priorities are on the person who is frozen because that can't be good for your inner organs. So what is it you want to do once you are across the icy tundra of Ernie's juice bar? I would like to like put the marble near like his chest or like around here so that like that can like de-thaw. What is your willpower? It's your smarts defense. My smart Steve. Oh, right there. Um, that is a uh, sixteen. Uh, sixteen. Uh, you meet. Um, you meet the ice shadows evasion. So it is going to do this like hissing roar sound in your general direction, and um, because what you were holding was a marble. Um, the marble is going to kind of move out of your hand and it's going to start rolling away. Oh, I, I'm going to chase after it. All right. This marble is the most important thing to me right now. All right. Uh, snow minions. It's time for the snow minions. Now there's three of them. Eddie. Eddie, those snow minions miss you. And um, while the ice shadow is entranced with brick... Those snow minions um, hop on over to you, Eddie, and they they would like to uh, they'd like to see if if you taste like a snow cone. So they're going to attempt to bite you. This is only a little horrifying. There's three of them. They're just they're just curious. That's all. 
they get an 11, which I think is uh, not your, it is, uh, what is your cleverness, Eddie? Oh, you would have to try to go for one of my other ones, eh? Uh, thankfully, my cleverness is decent, so it's 16. It's a 16, okay. So you're not like shaking in your boots, but uh, the longer you see these things, the uh, more problems you're starting to envision in your head. Uh, I would also like you to give me a survival roll, please. Yes, yes. I got a 15 on that survival. 15. It's cold, but you're dealing with it. And then it's going to be Jane. I would like to punch more snowmen, please. Uh, you can punch, you can blade, you can blast, whatever you'd like to do. I would like to punch because that felt really, really good. Um, Great. And I would also like to do another power strike. That that's what it's there for. Twenty. Twenty. Yeah, you punch one. It's gone down. Yay! So now there are only two. Yeah. Uh, did, uh, did did you punch one so Eddie has an opening to get away from? Yes. The three. Okay. So so Eddie, now you have a window of opportunity if you so if you so wish to use it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, speaking of windows of opportunity, it is uh, the top of the round. Everyone give me a survival roll. Uh, Eddie, you don't have to. I just made you make one. Uh, but Brick and Jane and... Yeah, just Brick and Jane. Just need survival rolls. Jane got a 10. Jane got a 10. 17. Jane, it's getting a little cold for you. Um, the survival, The longer you're in this cold the more you're starting to feel it. Uh, it's going to start getting, it's going to start getting survivally in here. Uh, <laughs> it's not going to be very cash money. Who's going to be the first to be voted off? Hopefully no one. We'll see. Uh, Eddie, it is the top of the round and it is your turn. I see. We got the opening there. I'm going to go ahead and make use of that so I'm no longer like in the, the epicenter of snowman focus but at least on the perimeter uh um, you swear you hear them say but daddy we love you <laughs> they don't actually say that it might be the hypothermia setting it. uh that no 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 uh no, no, no thanks uh no thanks go away um checks in the mail um I, I, the iceberg is calling um, we're, having um, a bit, we're having a good time here we're all having a good time and with that, I'm going to get away from the the creepy uh, the creepy snow hug circle and um, try to go towards uh, and help um, Brick by punching the um, the big boss thing that uh, is next to Ernie. All right, so I'm actually going to have you make a choice, Eddie. You can help Brick, or you can go after Cecil. Um, I am not confident that Eddie has noticed the marble. Okay. So I'm going to go help Brick. All right. What do you want to do? I am going to attempt to uh, apply the front end of my fist to some portion of this ice creature's body. Okay. So here's going to be the snag in that. Uh, no pun intended. You are going to need to do an athletics to climb up onto the juice bar counter in order to punch. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the climbing skill check is enough that with your movement, it's more like a sprint. So you won't be able to punch. You'll be right there in line of sight. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take that risk. Um, okay. So I will That's need to that. roll an athletics check. Yes, you will. All for right. climbing, if you don't have the specialization, just go ahead and roll it with specialization. Thank you kindly. Well, we'll see. Don't thank me yet. I got a 24. You got a 24. Uh, so you get up there. I Were you expecting, like, the ice shadow to, like, have bad breath or to, like, say something flippy or anything? Um, no and no. Okay. Well, it doesn't, so it's met your expectations. <laughs> you freaking lean the sound. All right. All right. Carry on. Uh, I'm having a good time tonight. Uh, I don't know if you're... Are you having a good time, Brick? <laughs> well, once we 
melt this ice demon. I mean, it's a shadow. You don't know if it's a demon necessarily. Seems pretty demon-y to me. Also, it's a demon I'm in with... all of our hearts, and that's what matters. What would you like to do? Eddie is now all up in the face um, of the ice shadow. Um, I mean, I want to keep shooting at this thing, but I also have I do I notice that the mar- the marble is still rolling away, or does Cecily still have the marble? Uh, because combat takes like six seconds, it is rolling away, and Cecily is going after it. Uh, so that is the same choice that I will offer to you because you did see Cecily go over and say something, um, and you noticed something was happening at the table. So I'll give you the same choice I gave Eddie. I think I should just stay shooting at the guy because I don't want him to like. I'm worried that if I don't, if we don't, we've already done a pretty significant. Well, I've done a, a decent amount of damage to him, right? Or I don't know if you can tell me that. You've done damage. I can't tell you how much. You've done the most damage to it out of any of your other members. Um, I'm volley shotting again. <laughs> okay. Uh, no advantages this time because Eddie is making it happen from a difficult angle. So if you have like any edge advantages, you don't get it this time. It's just going to be straight whatever the volley shot is. Also, is your volley shot attached to your personal power points? No. Okay. I, I don't think so. No, it's not. I just want to double check to make sure it's it's a the only thing. Fight, yeah. yeah, the only thing that I need to that I would use my power points on is the penetrating shot costs a power point, and then when I had my thunder slinger, I had a thing called, um, uh, yeah. shatter okay. strike. Yes, but I don't have that anymore. So I would also offer, and this is something you could do that you have as a pink ranger called group strike. That allows you to roll for a ranged attack at a ten per ten, ten by ten square of enemies. So are they in a ten by ten square of enemies? Yeah, they're, all, they're all of them are in the same yeah. place. Yeah, they or, they have no awareness that. of space, so you could totally do that. All right, cool. And, uh, yeah. All right, now um, one ranged attack on a ten by okay, okay, okay. I that's still targeting, right? Yeah, it's still targeting. I got an 18. That's an 18. Uh, so you actually do manage to like, you're at an angle where you do like a weird kind of diamond shaped shot. Uh, Jane, this is like the most impressive shot I, you've probably seen Rick make in a while. Literally is like a diamond of pink laser going around the room. Uh, Eddie, unfortunately, you can't really see it because it's like, behind you for most of the time but jane you get like the full full rhombus oh rama i think that was amazing just doing my job miss <laughs> cecily you missed it it was so cool cecily ah uh, well i mean the uh, marble is very exciting to me so what am i gonna do it happens uh so so yeah so now it is the ice shadows turn uh eddie yes yeah, hi. What Hello. Was, uh, what's your willpower again? Uh, wouldn't you like to know one of my other defenses, perhaps? No, I want to know your willpower. Would you, maybe my, my toughness? I can tell you my toughness. Not your toughness. Well, then my cleverness. My cleverness is pretty good, too. Oh, uh, sweetie. No? Just you're no? only making it worse. You're uh, only will, <laughs> my willpower is of 13. Uh, so... Uh, I, I don't know how to explain this other than to tell you what happens. The ice shadow breathes out ice crystals. Uh, Eddie, you are now trapped inside of a snowman. I've become one with a snowman. Yeah, but you're you're in there, though. You're not a snowman, to be clear. You are just now trapped inside of a snowman on no, top of Ernie's new spiral. Uh, um, I'm sorry, but you have that wrong. That snowman is trapped here with me. Great. That's that's going to work out for your survival rolls, I'm sure. Um, I'm just going to put Chili next to your name for no reason. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. So that was the eyeshadow's turn. Uh, I'm going to change Eddie, my name and zoom to Eddie Thatchsickle. Eddie Thatchsickle. Uh, so um, I'm going to give... Jane or and or Brick a chance to respond to the thing you just saw happen because that's that's new. So when you say he becomes he goes is he like kind of like Ernie is now like he's like frozen 
or is no, he, he's inside one of the snow minions? Uh, yeah, I'm literally like inside. Yeah. So he's it looks inside like there's a Aether. snow minion where Eddie Thatch used to be. There is a brand new snow minion where Eddie Thatch used to be. That is that is accurate to say. And he still has control of his faculties, right? Like it it's still just Eddie. He just looks like a snowman, or is uh, it you're Eddie assuming I had control of my faculties beforehand. You're so nice. <laughs> also, until it's Eddie's turn, there's not really a way to know. Dun dun dun. dun uh. There's another disappearing power ranger. Which is oh, drama. No. Yeah, I, I think I think if this would happen, like just like I feel like Jane would just go to a very dark place if that if that was what would happen. <laughs> she just I pulled would, herself out of that I place. Would, I would never do that. That that sounds like beyond the pale. Um, but more importantly, uh, Eddie Thatch is now Eddie Thatchickle. They're trapped inside of a snowman. <laughs> um, just so, just to paint the picture for everybody, um, that's that's just not very cool of me, really. Uh, I would um, argue that it is pretty cool of you to have done. I would have to agree. Oh, if you're going to be painting the picture of it, do we get any little happy tree friends? <laughs> oh, happy tree friends. Uh, Cecily, so yeah. you did not witness any of that. Uh, your disgraceful is not cold anymore. You're you're going after this marble. Yeah. Uh, this marble rolls to the front of the front office door and stops. Okay. I have a question for you, Cecily. Did you ever ask Jane or Eddie about what happened to them in Stone Canyon? I didn't. Okay. You're standing in a hallway, uh, having now picked up this marble, I assume. Yeah, I, of course, grab it. I'm like, this is mine to manipulate with. One or two? Two. Open the door. Uh, the, the, the office door is not as frozen as the rest of the doors were like. It actually looks like you could open the, the front office door. Okay. I'm going to try it then. Let's let's open her up. It opens and there is... Um, were you paying much attention to the thing that uh, Eddie picked up as you were climbing the ladder, like that he was kind of showing off? Um, I like glanced over, but I didn't really... I don't think it like completely uh, settled into my brain. Okay. Well, the little green cube thing that he had, there's a red cube thing in here. Oh. Well, that's interesting and worth investigating. It is. So um, the closer you get, the more you realize this room is not cold, which is nice for a break for one. Um, for two, you hear the sound faintly of something happening, uh, and as you approach the, they, they look kind of like colored versions of the fifth element cubes. Does everyone know what I'm talking about in the fifth element when they have like the things with the symbols they have to take to Egypt and they have to put them in the thing? Everyone, everyone tracking that? I'm not, right? I've never seen it, but I, I get it. Okay, so it's a big box. It's it's a big slip. Well, it's not a big box. It's a slim box, um, and a little top part of it slides open, big enough for a marble. Ooh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. It's marble time. It's beckoning to me. My the curiosity uh, has definitely peaked the Blue Ranger. Okay, so. Uh, are you going to, because it is on top of like a filing cabinet right now, are you holding it in your hand or are you just like watching the proceedings next to it? I am holding it in my hand. As you insert the marble, the puzzle box, because it's actually a puzzle box, begins to turn in your hand and it's turning and it's kind of shrugging off uh, the redness of it. and. Um, and it stops and it seems to shake a little bit and shows a symbol of an eagle. 
And then you hear, oh, with the hope and warmth of fire, welcome Flaming Eagle. Uh, Cecily Adwell, I want you to look in the roll 20, scroll up um, to the very top of the like handout thing, and you'll see a folder called Sentinel Things. You should be able to see it. Oh, yes, the Fire Eagle. I want you to read the first paragraph under the picture. Don't look at the picture too hard. But read, read the first paragraph. When activated, along with a standard set of Morphin Grid power armor, the Sentinel ally is not a new armor, but will add a pinstripe of red along the ranger's shoulders down to their armor gloves. The insignia silhouette of an eagle outlined around the center diamond on their chest, if applicable, uh, and their visor will have a slight red tint to it. The red tint allows for a shift up to any infiltration or alertness role where the ranger in question is seeking heat signatures. There is also a plus one sharp bonus to all successful hand-to-hand -hand combat scenarios. And stop reading there. Uh, but I want you to bear this in mind. Uh, by the way, what uh, nobody else saw uh, is that um, as you hear the, the jungle Tarzan noise, a clear box, but with red lines, kind of forms around you. And then there's just like red light. And when you open it, then you have the pinstripe along your shoulder and your visor is tinted just slightly red. It doesn't uh, obscure your vision at all, but it's definitely not something you're used to. Uh, I will also state that it was not loud enough. You heard it more in your head. Yeah. So nobody in the other room heard that. Well, starting to look like Captain America in here. It's also uh, your turn. That I'm essentially... Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I don't know what to do from this point because um, I'm in a separate room. So... I don't need to pick anything up, right? Like it's all there now. It's just in. There's nothing to pick up now. It's okay. part of you. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to scoot back through the door and be like, well, it looks like I've got some new stuff to try out and I'm going to go after, uh, well, I'm not going to go after Eddie the snowman, but I'm going to, I wouldn't know that specifically, but I'm going to hopefully go after a different snowman. I want you to give me a culture roll. I got a 20. You got a 20. Um, as you've come to combat, uh, you feel something heavy in your hand, and I want you to read the second paragraph oh. of the Fire Eagle. Let's go. This sentinel ally has a power weapon known as the Fire Eagle Sword. Any ranger wielding it with less than a D6 in finesse may wield it with a snag. Though it looks like a normal sword, it has two modes. One, one and stop, oh. stop there. You just see it as a normal sword right now. Oh, yeah. Um, I'm like, finally, I have a sword again. Yes. Uh, so you can decide what you want to do. Um, I'll let you know what happened if you do it as a sword or if you do it as a ranged sword. So it'll be like, if you want to do it as a sword, finesse. If you want to try it as a ranged weapon, you can do it um, as targeting. I'm going to use it as a sword because uh, I think Cecily is just so hyped to have a sword. It's a very Sweeney Todd, at last my arm is complete again kind of moment. Um, All right. She has missed her sword a lot. Uh, but uh, she's going to go after one of the snowmen with her sword. And she's like, look what I found, guys. You're going to go up to the snowman next to, the, uh, next to Ernie, right? No, I'm not gonna. I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping, like I like, because I'm like logically, there's no way for me to know which one's not Eddie, right? I'll say you weren't there for that, so you just see another one anyway. <laughs> I just see another one, but I'm gonna go after one of the ones that's already kind of beat up, right? Yeah, you can totally do that. Give me that. Uh, give me that finesse roll. You get a twelve. Uh, it slices 
through the snowmen like hot butter and it just like they don't make a shrieking noise but you imagine a shrieking noise this seems to do really well against ice beings oh well i think i got a ringer nice sword well, looks like yeah. the blue rangers packing some heat <laughs> i feel like a bomb pop you guys <laughs> Great. Uh, Jade, it's it's your turn. Um, are there any other snowmen besides Snowman Eddie? There is. Uh, oh wait, Jane, it's not your turn. It is the. It's actually a snow minion's turn. Um, the snow minion actually kind of recoil from <laughs> Cecily. And in recoiling from Cecily, they knocked down Snowman Eddie to behind the juice bar. So, Eddie, you are now not just in a snowman, you are prone. <laughs> just like that. It's like Parlors and Paragons all over again for me. Uh, Jane, now it is your turn. I'm a little bummed that I don't have a fancy sword to start slicing things with, so I guess I'm just going to punch something. Is that, is that the burning flame of envy just now? Yes, yes, it was. Um, um, I guess the one that was kind of recoiling from Cecily, I would like to punch it. Yes, there's, there's, yeah, yeah, because there's only really one left now. Yeah. How do I want to spend another PowerPoint? I'm going to spend another PowerPoint. I mean, they are finite, but they do like re-up at the end of the episode so like you, you're not they, they exist to be spent essentially i had a 14 uh 14 is not enough their toughness is 15 no. okay um you I actually slip choose. a little bit uh you actually slip a little bit because it's ice um but it does seem to be thawing a little bit with the presence of cecily which is Interesting. Just file that away for later. Even it's spicy. Um, Eddie, give me a survival roll. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Poor Eddie. I'm glad you're having a good time. I got a three. That's a three. You take a point of health damage. Womp womp. Yeah. Uh, also, with that three, you, you're not... It's it's heavier than you think being inside of snowman. Snow is heavier than you think, so you can't actually like get up either, which is uh yeah. Don't think about it too hard. Um Brick, it's your turn. There's still a snow minion left. Or how many yeah, how many snow minions are there? Eddie Eddie fell behind the counter. Cecily sliced one snow minion. And yeah, there's one left because um Oh, my my shot earlier got rid of the other ones. Yes, uh, and we still have the we still have Mister Ice. We still have Mister Frozen Shadow, right? Yeah. So instead of Ice Shadow creating more snow minions last turn, Ice Shadow froze Eddie into a snowman. So oh, gotcha. Okay. He wasn't able to do both. Gotcha. Okay. Um, he chose the path of vengeance. Um, I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna try and get rid of this last snow minion but because i noticed that cecily cecily you don't have a d6 in finesse i do oh yeah so you don't have to do with the snag that's why i didn't yeah okay it's like it was made for her crazy um crazy i am going to yeah i'm gonna i'm just gonna keep volley shot in this thing i don't know Right. Sure. That's yeah. I, it's you're 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 the pink ranger. Unless Cecily wants to transfer her fire powers to me, and then I can just wipe everybody off the face of the map right now. But you know, if we want to keep playing, <laughs> mine. Okay. Um, <laughs> you already have a cool thing. I know. I have a cool. I'm just. I'm just joking. I know. I'm <laughs> just messing with you. Okay, I got a 22. Um, the righteous fury of this snow minion. You just like pot shot it right in the coal buttons on its chest. I like, and yeah. it goes down. 
I'd like to I'd like to think I'm like since I get my three volley shots in here, I'm gonna do like a gonna shoot one of its like arms off, and I'm gonna shoot the other one's arm off, and then it's gonna like fall to its knees, and I'm just gonna shoot its little snow head off, and it's gonna just great. Just... What's your willpower out of curiosity? <sighs> Thirteen. Okay. Please roll low. Please roll low. Please roll low. Please roll. Low. Please roll low. No. Yeah. So you know how you just destroyed one of its little children that it created? Oh no, I'm a yeah. child of the You're a porn. Man now. Yeah, you were close enough. Uh, children. Fortunately, the... you're not on the counter, so you can't fall behind the counter. But you're you're now you're now uh, brick sickle. Uh, Jane. That's uh, that's another ranger that looks like they're gone now. No, I mean, that, but you saw trauma here. No, but you saw this happen. You both saw this happen. So, like, you're not. I don't know if you saw Eddie fall behind the counter, but like, there, there's, you know, it didn't disappear into nothing. Now they're just inside the snowman. That's, you know, not horrifying whatsoever. I, I I I mean it's kind of horrifying, but it's also not disappeared into black smoke. This is very true. Um, Screw that black smoke. Hopefully, you'll be able to save them before they suffocate under their snowy prison. Um, Cecily, it's your turn. Uh yeah. Well, I, now I've seen that happen, and I'm like, wait, where's Eddie? He he's a snowman back there. Oh my gosh! So don't <laughs> hit those two. Uh, well, when you when you go right. away, this is what happens, Cecily. This is what happens when you leave the room during. Con- I leave. I leave for three seconds, and then suddenly, I'm sorry. We cannot be left unsupervised. You should know that, <laughs> uh, Cecily. Give me targeting. Targeting. That's a 20. I want you to make a choice. Huh. I'm going to read what the Fire Eagle Sword does. Same. And I want you to decide who gets the benefit of this or if you go after the villain. Save me. Fire, <laughs> are you actually like muttering that underneath the snow? Help me. Help me. It's very cash money of you. Um, so the Fire Eagle Sword. The Fire Eagle Sword does look to be a normal sword, but it does have two modes. One within your reach, which you've used as a sword, and a range that gives you up to twice twice reach. Both have a damage of sharp one, but both also come with a fire element that does an extra point of damage when ranged. You can also use this as a maneuver. And what happens is, is when you use it as a ranged weapon, it actually seems to come apart a little bit as though it's uh as though it's made of different sword pieces so it's like on a chain it becomes like the sort of like chain sword whip thing with little bits of fire coming out of the side i want you to decide if you're going to fire whip the bad guy if you're going to fire whip save eddie or if you're going to fire whip save brick because you can't hit all three of them but I want to hit the bad guy because I think that if I hit the bad guy, everybody else is going to de thaw out. All right. That's what I'm going to go for. Um, you um, you use that 20 uh, with that 20 because that's a pretty high roll. Um, you crack Ernie's ice shadow in two and with your helmet you can see Ernie's heart go boop, 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 like he's starting to come back to life oh. a little bit. Yeah, um, Ernie's heart grew three sizes that day. Unfortunately, <laughs> doesn't it does start to melt the space slowly, but Brick and Eddie are both still trapped. So I need Brick and Eddie to both make me survival rolls. Um Jane, if you wish to lend assistance, you can try to start digging one out of the snow, as it were. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Who would you like to lend assistance to, give an edge in their survival check? Don't worry. It's just, you know, 
One of your friends. A suffocating. The I, know, I know what she should do, but I also know what she would probably do. Just a touch of hypothermia. It's all right. It's I'm all right. Sur- I'm rolling a survival. Uh, one of you is going to get edge because uh, Jane is going to assist by digging you out. But oh, I'm. Uh, we're waiting for Jane. Well, who's Jane, Jane gonna? Who's I'm Jane gonna? Sorry, pick? Jane. I did that. Just Jane, like who, gonna are gonna 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 pick. Pick. who are you gonna pick? Who are you gonna pick? Pick the right person. Pick the correct one. Who are you gonna pick? Just think. What I know what she's gonna do. No pressure. No pressure. But we're gonna take this very personally. Thanks. Um, We're having a good time. It's all in fun and games, folks. Who are you um, gonna pick? <laughs> she doesn't know that Eddie has taken health damage, so she would go after Brick. Yeah. All right. So I want you to do survival with an edge, Brick, and Eddie just survival. Uh, Eddie Fetch got a 14. Eddie you do not take so another good. point of damage. You're doing pretty good. Thank you for rolling high. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to go, Eddie Fatch. What, what is just, by your own snowman? I can, I can always I can always remember the, the times when I had to rely on myself and not my friends, and the <laughs> shutter speed oh. is there for me. Oh, that's that's how very doesn't speak of you. Uh, so that 13 is pretty good. You don't take damage, and you can feel like someone is digging you out of the snow, uh, but you don't quite know it's Jane right away. Uh, but we're going to say... Um, that Brick gets out of his snowmany prison first. Uh, the snowmen are no longer sentient. Um, who would like to help dig Eddie out of the snow? I'm not going to make anybody roll for that, but uh, someone please. <laughs> it's like this is like that scene in uh, Ghostbusters where they were then inside the um, roasted dog statues. Oh yeah, no Cecily will go over and help. Uh, she's like I, she's like I got that like they were both in here. She's like, but I thought that if I hit the big baddie, all the other things would just melt away. Oh, right. It's a good thing that you got rid of it. If you did get rid of it, right? Yeah, it, 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 it shattered and there was, there was heat. Um, it, was, it was mystical fire because a chain whip sword thing is, yeah, yeah. Um, Eddie, Eddie and Brick, uh, I, I guess, uh, Brick, you've seen this now, uh, but Eddie, as Cecily digs you out, you are now seeing Cecily with new accoutrement. Oh, red too? Yeah, bomb pop chic. Nice. How are you feeling? Are you, are you good? I, I have like, I would have offered you the marble thing, but it's, you know. Uh, uh, pins and needles. Yeah. Okay. Um, like, would touching the sword make his hands warmer? Uh, it, Ernie, that's it. That's not really how it works. Uh, okay. Ernie is. This is like magical ice. So as things thaw, Ernie's going to come back to life uh, without massive permanent damage. He is confused, um, but he sees the Power Rangers, and he's like, "Oh, I, oh." Wow. Okay. Whew. Um. Hi. Uh. Hello. It. Why? It's very. Why is everything melting in my juice bar? Um. There was a situation, and, and we handled it. Everything will be okay. Oh. You're okay. Yeah. I. Well. I mean. I'm. I'm cold. I, I'm gonna need a second Hawaiian shirt, but I. I can get one of those from the back. It's fine. Um. What. I, I I mean I have questions, but I, I just don't do you have yeah, any yeah get a sub. Thank you. Make sure to make them. Luckily, I think it was a supernatural kind of thing, and you're not gonna have a big jump in your uh electricity bill for the freezing. So that's that's good. Said. It was it was the weirdest thing though, was I started getting like really depressed this morning when I got up, I started having like really like bad thoughts about being in Angel Grove. And I don't even remember coming here. Like the whole day has been a blur. What time is it even? I'd like to know that answer myself. <laughs> Sorry, watch doesn't go with this outfit. Uh, the, uh, the answer out of character is um, like 3 p.m. Oh, cool. 
Um, uh, Brick is going to say something along the lines of, well, and he's going to try and disguise his voice like he always does when he talks <laughs> to people while he's in his uh, armor. Uh, citizen, it's good that you are uh, doing well. Um, please do not close the bar, the juice bar. You are a pinnacle of this community, and we hope you warm up. I I didn't have any plans to close the juice bar, but thank you for thank you for that. Um, yeah, but it. Are are you like a time traveler from like the 1940s? Is that your is that your whole thing? No, just a superhero. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right. A different strokes are different spokes, as I always say. Um, yeah, I don't. Uh, well, I guess I've got to go find some. Got to find a mop and some paper towels. Um, whew, it's a little a little brisk. Uh, I, I guess. Um, Thank you, Rangers. Uh, it, you should probably get out of here before the mob of teens comes in, or you'll never you'll never get out because they'll they'll want everything about you. So you should probably all in a day's work, Just doing our duty. Yeah, yeah, stop by stop by the juice bar anytime. I mean, probably stop by earlier, like right when we're going to close, and I'll give you a free smoothie. But like, not midday. We get really busy midday, but like any other time, you know, if it's not too busy, feel free to stop by for a, for a smoothie. Fair On enough. The house. I love matcha. We have matcha. We do. Uh, we, we're yeah. doing matcha shots with orange juice now. It's, it's very popular. Yeah. Very healthy. All right, team, let's head out. <laughs> Uh, so the front door is still frozen over. It's taking time. So I'm going to give you the option of teleporting back to Zordon with the things you have learned, or uh, we can go to the evening portion of the scene. Um, and there's something a little different planned then. So you can go back to Zordon if you so wish, or you can, um, or or we can or we can move on to the scene. Um, I do feel like going to Zordon is the logical next step, but yeah, I do want to tell him that I got this spiffy new stripe. Zordon, Zima. Uh, you you actually like you don't have to say to Zordon, but you can if you want to. Uh, there there is a way for you to just like, there's like a button on your morpher you can press, and you all teleport back to the command center. And Alpha looks at Cecily and goes. Uh, Cecily, it's wow! Look at you! What you have an eagle on your chest? I know. I found a marble, and there was the sound of I think George of the Jungle in the uh, and suddenly I've oh. got a spiffy new racing stripe. You you do? That's I've never seen anything like that. Sorry, have you ever seen anything like that? And Zoran goes, "No, I have not." How there was. There was a George of the Jungle sound. Yeah, you know. The, uh, that's very, that's very aggressive. Uh, very, I, I have, I did. It, did it serve you? Did it serve you well? It looked. It served you well in battle. It seems it was uh, extremely helpful because not only did I get a sword, and you know I've been itching to get my sword back. Um, yes, but it was a hot sword like temperature hot um it started off with a fire element yeah well there was this marble okay and it it was warm to the touch and then it rolled and i followed it where it was rolling because i wanted to pick it up and melt somebody with it it was all taken care of and after but anyway then there was a place that looked like the marble was supposed to go and like curiosity was like put the marble in the box and so i did and then i heard the sound and then suddenly there's red i have a sword and i'm slicing through snowmen there was a box that the marble went into yes it was like a little thing and there was like a hole and it looked like you know you know when you just know that certain things like fit together mm. you have got yeah uh alpha's gonna look at you at and go eddie didn't did did, did did you find a box as well you said you found it outside of the grid library 
Yeah, but I pull it out of my little storage facing. I got a, this green box, but oh, it's I don't. Green. I don't have like a marble. I don't. I don't see like a oh, maybe we marble, have to find a marble. I mean, I it shake is. it and put my ear next to it. Oh, is it, did anything happen? Alpha's like Alpha's like listening on the other side of your ear, and he's like, "No, I don't hear anything." I wonder no. if the red marble can go in there too. How red, how does it how does it work? I mean, he puts. Does it happen? That how do you? Oh, we're gonna have to. We're gonna we'll figure it out. It'll be it'll be really fun. Um, I'm gonna I, lick the green cube. Uh, Alpha Alpha says we couldn't we couldn't look into Ernie's from the viewing globe. Whatever was going on in there. We couldn't see you once you went in the building. We couldn't track you, so I'm I'm glad you're I'm glad you're safe. It was very cold. Uh, uh did did anyone <laughs> say or do anything to tell you why it was cold? Was it a ele- electronic malfunction Rita took ad- advantage of? There were these like weird snow monster things and then there was this like ice shadow that was behind ernie and ernie was like frozen and then um eddie and and turned into snowmen. it was very weird what not ernie things was he saying what he was just being real cold hmm. i, I would care anymore oh but... interesting well, if someone is acting out of character and then something like this happens, that might be information useful for the future as we continue on. But congratulations. Um, that sword that you're bearing, that fire sword, I guess I will call it, um, does seem as though it is currently allied with you, which is which is a wonderful and useful thing. Uh, it looks like, I guess, whatever has affected the other power weapons is not affecting that as well. Which is which is very good and useful to know. I'm excited to see where this takes me. Hmm. Uh, Sorry, Alpha. Uh, we'll have to see if we get Miss Ad- Miss Adwell's permission to examine this flame sword. But um, considering all that we've been through, perhaps it's it's best if it's left in your possession for the time being, Miss Adwell. Uh, if you figure out what is going on with the marble and, I guess, the home of the marble, um, that is that is good to know. Uh, otherwise, I would say that you've had a very long day, Rangers, and perhaps it's best for you to rest. Um, yes. Cool. Zordon, thanks for all the help. Brick is going to say kind of coldly. <laughs> Uh, Zordon doesn't have any defense to that. Um, it seems like there's something he does stop himself from saying, but it's it's more sad than it is uh, pertinent necessarily. Uh, so he he pauses, but that's Zordon. Zordon pauses a lot. Um, yeah. Does anyone else have anything they want to do before we do this kind of evening scene? Uh, and he's gonna like tap on the side of the green box. Be like, hello. Tap, 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 tap. So, Cecily, you said that... Oh, sorry. Please, friend. Cecily, you said that it was like the spirit of an eagle came from the box? Yeah, there was a spirit of an eagle. There was the uh, George of the Jungle sound. And suddenly I have a sword. And the sword uh, has like a reddish... Oh, and there's like a reddish tint to my visor. Just like a little differing aesthetic than I was uh, previously privy to. So I'm interested to see if this is like a permanent thing or if it's like a thing that maybe wears off with time. I don't really know the science behind a lot of this, but I'm trying. (laughs) Um, The only reason I ask is because we did see those four um animals um when we were climbing up through the depths of the command center and i think an eagle was one of them oh so i wonder if those things are related considering that the box looks so very very similar to 
You said the box looks very similar to the one Eddie has. Oh, I can see the box, right? Yeah, uh, you can't. You can see the green box. Uh, yeah, my box is gone. Um, yes, you you can't see you can't see the box that Cecily used. Not currently, at least. There is a way, but but they do they did look similar, right? Yes, it's got a similar kind of vibe. Cool. Aesthetically, they share traits. That's all. That's all I wanted to say. All right. Um, so if nobody has anything else they want to do, we'll move to an evening scene. Uh, Jane and Cecily, this involves you mostly, but there may be information you're going to want to pass along to uh, Eddie and Brick and anyone else you think it's pertinent to give this information to. There are actually two things that are happening at the same time, and you can decide um, one is in the form of an email, one is in the form of a video call. And so we can do the email first, I think. Uh, you both have an email from Mrs. Appleby, weirdly enough. Uh, she's not one of your teachers, instructors. Um, you still see her in Angel Grove High Campus. Uh, it's an email, though, about Mrs. Smothers. Um, and apparently the gist of the email is that uh, Mrs. Mothers is not going to be in for class tomorrow. Uh, people have been having trouble uh, getting in touch, getting subs. They've had they've had an inordinate amount of people just like not showing up to sub for school, which is very weird. Um, so she's going to be coming in as your teacher tomorrow. And she says that you are starting a new unit on local literature. Um, and she gets really excited about this uh, first poem that you're going to read together. The poem is called uh, The Sentinels of Light. It was written by one of the first artists to move into Angel Grove. Um, uh, the email continues on. She's rather effusive. So she says, well, I, we think so at least. Time obscures actual authorship of the poem. Uh, but it's a pretty good one. She has sent you a link to the poem from the local library. Uh, there is a missing final stanza to this poem that has been lost in time, and your homework assignment is going to be to come up with this stanza. Um, this is the point where I would like Cecily and Jane to read this poem. It was sent to you as a spoiler oh. yesterday, and so if you see C, that's uh, Cecily. If you see J, that's Jane. I'm opening it up now. Um, and also, uh, um, Mrs. Appleby is going to go on to uh, talk about how it's kind of like her favorite other poem, The Highwayman by Noyes. Um, but it obviously has a different rhythm to it. But if you'd like to read the poem in for record, now's the time. All right. Vast the darkness grows. We reap what we sow. As we sojourn on, they carry forth spark and seed into desolate lands. And the sentinels watch high above, and the sentinels watch low below, and the sentinels watch through within, without the sentinels approve. When the earth rumbles and cannot bear the weight of our sins, the anger, the purloined souls, filled back with hatred and dark. And the sentinels watch high above, and the sentinels watch low below, and the sentinels watch through within, without the sentinels approve. The cure is the sentinels, a light, a protection unfathomable, represented by the purity of animalia forms. And the sentinels watch high above, and the sentinels watch low below, and the sentinels watch through within, without the Sentinels approve. All right, and that is the end of the email from Mrs. Appleby. Um, Brick, you likely know this poem since you've lived in Angel Grove your whole life, I believe, right? Or at least a large portion. Uh, Eddie, have you lived in Angel Grove your whole life? Yes. Okay, so you'd both be practically familiar with this. This is a poem that is 
well known throughout Angel Grove, but it's like a history poem. So it's like, unless your parents are really into it, like nobody's like reciting it at ball games. Um, but it's not, it's not an unknown thing. It's just nothing that has potentially meant anything until now. Um, Cecily or Jane, do you think it's worth it to send along to Eddie and Brick? I think that Cecily is going to be very captivated by the fact that they're talking about the purity of the Animalia forms. And uh, she's going to be like, hey, townies, um, in like a jokingly like loving tone. Um, are you guys familiar with this? Uh, could you use some insight? Uh, Mrs. Appleby is subbing tomorrow and she's asking us to write another stanza. Kind of interesting. What do you think? Like it's a text that she sends to both of them or like probably like the Ranger group chat. Did you like underline the Animalia too? It's like triple yeah. highlighted so they don't An miss it. Animalia, like, yeah, I'm sending like a picture of it and I have like a scribble and it's like highlighted in like pink and blue and red. Like there's some arrows coming off of it just so they don't whisk the word. Yeah, I was like, this is kind of weird, right? But Power Rangers, call but there's no black uh, uh, sharp uh, highlighters, so... There's just like those are just arrows. sharpies. Yeah, that, that's the opposite of what you want. There are purple though. You can use purple and purple would black. work, um, or just like a felt tip pen, using that to emphasize with lines underneath. All right. Um, so I think that's just going to respond uh, rather quickly after a very brief read. With oh, it looks like it's spelled right, and then shortly after, oh, 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 wait, what? Like. And she's uh, gonna oh, if Jane wants to do anything, sorry. Uh, no, I'm just going to be like, Eddie, as a collector of art, uh, you have a version of an Angel Grove map that you bought years ago from somebody mm -hmm. that actually inscribed these stanzas of this poem superimposed over a map of Angel Grove's original town limits. Uh, you have no idea where it is because it didn't, like, cut the grade about four years ago. You've just got it somewhere rolled up. But you have this poem in like an art form somewhere, either so that, in the room or just hanging out somewhere in your house. So then, um, with like, I, I think I have something about like, and then uh, I, I gotta look for it. And that's basically all I'll say. And then at that point, I'm gonna start turning my room inside out. It's true. Um, the only thing, in the pro oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that Brick um, probably says something along the lines of that, like, he probably saw this. If it's been in, if it's like an Angel Grove thing, they probably had them, like, read it when they were in, like, elementary school or something. They do a play about it. Right, right. So, like, he has, like, some sort of, like, vague There's a picture of, of you in a costume. Probably, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure Brick's mom has a plethora of images of that um but anyway uh i think he's he's gonna say just like maybe this is something we should be looking into maybe there's answers somewhere with read between the lines that's all yeah, I was just going to say Jane was probably in the process of sending a similar text when she got Cecily's. So she's just waiting to see what the other two send back. Um, all right. So, Jane, um, your other one is a um, Zoom chat connect thing with uh, Jocelyn Larson, the local voice of Angel Grove High Morning News, for your 10 Things You Can't Live Without segment. If there's Anything that you want to do before the segment happens, now's the time. Because Jocelyn has a way of getting information out of you. You may not want other people to find out before you have control I forgot of the information. That I needed to think of that. Okay. Um yeah, she okay, so what time of day is it? Uh, so it's like 6 37 uh you've had dinner you just finished reading mrs appleby's ode to the sentinels of light poem 
Um, and Jocelyn is just like always on, so it really doesn't matter when you click the thing. She'll just respond right away. Okay. Um, she is going to, oh, how does she want to do this? She is going to call, I think, because text just seems weird. Um, she's going to call Brick. I'm just going to meet myself and enjoy this as, a, oh. as an innocent bystander. <laughs> Good luck. Uh, hey, uh, what's going on? Hey, um, your 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 mom isn't there, is she? No, she's busy. Um, she's busy uh, doing some cleaning. I think. Okay. okay, I just want to make sure. Um, I just want to make sure a that you're okay after you know. Oh yeah, you know I being I, an ice cube. I saw uh I saw your text from the other day earlier. Whenever time is weird, um, and I. You know, I didn't really have a chance to respond to it, but I just saw Cecily's message, and I was just thinking about what I was, what I was going to say to you. But yeah, uh, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm not a, uh, not frozen anymore, so that's a plus. Yeah, I just want to. I just wanted to make sure that you were okay. Um, but I also had another question, and um, and she like gets really, really nervous. Um. And you uh, yeah. can tell, like, she's, like, stumbling and, like, rambling, trying to, like... Yeah, Jane, I, you can ask me anything. <laughs> no, it's not boxers and briefs again. <laughs> um, so she says, so I know that you were, um, you were raising money for the homecoming and stuff, and I was just wondering if you were going to the, 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 the dance? Um... I mean, yeah, I, I probably, you know, like the, they have some thing with the baseball team that we have to do before it. And, um, I was thinking about going, but I, you know, I don't know, it's just another, like, I don't know. I'm getting pretty tired of these lame school events. You know what I mean? Especially with all this like metaphysical witch stuff happening all over the place and, us taking orders from a giant head in a tube who doesn't seem to know anything that's ever going on. Uh, dances seem kind of trivial, but maybe it'd be nice to, you know, just kind of, I don't know, let loose a little bit. Are are you going to go? Um, it, I've never been before because we move around a lot and I don't, it's really hard to make friends when you're only going to be somewhere for a year. And, um, but I was, I was thinking about it because, you know, now I have, you know, friends. Um, but I was wondering if maybe you wanted to go with, go with me to the, to the dance. Uh, wow. Uh, Jane, I, I, uh, yeah, totally. I, I would love to go to the dance with you for sure. Uh, that's, oh. that sounds like something that would make it way less lame, actually. Oh, uh, okay. Um, I didn't, I didn't expect you to say yes. So great. Um, I guess we can talk about it more. Um, oh, is that your mom I hear in the background? And like, she like starts getting you more nervous that like she heard his mom call. Honey, do you know what? where my bingo bag is? <laughs> I've uh, got a bingo uh, tonight. Mom, I think it's, uh, I I'm busy. Can you um are you, ask are, dad? Are you on the, are you on the phone? Can you ask no. your father? And can you call you call your father? I think he's down at the VFW hall. Okay, uh, sure, I'll call him. Uh, you know it's it's the Salmon night. You know how much he loves the Salmon. He sure does love salmon. What? <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'll I'll call him. Just said don't come here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, um, I can, I can let you, I can let you go. I just, um, I just wanted to, to say that. Um, uh, yeah, sure. I guess we could, um, I don't know. I'd uh, come up with, what was that? <laughs> Sorry. Excuse me. 
Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I I guess we can talk about this later. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, well, I have to go do a thing for that that woman. Um, but um, I'll I'll talk to you later. I guess. Uh, cool. All right. Um, well, have a good night. Bye. And then she hangs up really quick. Uh, both Hi. of you, please take a story point for that. <laughs> Thank you. Your face uh, was killing me. <laughs> it was so good. It's everything I wanted and more. <laughs> it's better than stuffing Eddie in a snowman. <laughs> better than Twilight. <laughs> okay, um, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so when you press on the link um, that uh, Jocelyn sent you, Jocelyn pops up and her room is like, super girly like to the point of being a little worried about how much she likes the care bears and uh she goes oh my god it's so good to talk to you jane russell it's me jocelyn larson thank you for doing this this 10 things you can't live without segment I love are you excited i am very excited Oh, that's so good. It's so close. So I'm just going to press record. Don't worry about it. Um, I'll edit around it. Like if you like have like weird silences or anything, I'm really, really good at this. That's why I'm the voice of Angel Grove Morning News. And you are delightful. Thank you. Oh my God. Okay. So basically the 10 things you can't live without is stuff that you like travel with or things you really need. I know you won the test and you're like an art person. So, like, let's start off with that. So, like, for the 10 things you can't live without, like, what kind of art supplies do you really, really need? Um, well, I mean, there's my easel, number one. I can't live without that. Um, and then I have a really nice set of um, brushes that my my parents bought me a couple of years ago. And I can't, that, that's another thing that I can't live without. Oh, what type of brushes are they? Just like, so we can like teach your listeners a little bit. Like, are they special brushes? I know there are some that are like made out of like hair and some that are like made out of like plastic or whatever. She actually grabs her bag that's kind of uh, on her bed next to her and pulls out the the set that she has. And she like holds it up to the camera and just kind of goes through and, and explains what's so great about them. Oh, I love it. We love the artists. This is why, this is part of why you won the test. It's so cool to see who gets it every year, even though I didn't win it last year, which is fine or whatever. Uh, so, so let's go through like some, I do like, I don't want to be like too traditionally girly, but like, do you have like a, like a jacket you really like, or like a necklace or earrings? Do you have any like stuff that you like to carry with you? Um, no, I have a scarf that was my mom's that I like to wear. Um, it, it's white and it has red flowers on it. It's really pretty. Um, but other than that, no, I don't really have any. Oh, okay. So you, you've moved around a lot because I know you're new to Angel Grove, right? So like you've moved mm -hmm. around a lot of here. So like, where was your favorite place to live? Um, my favorite place was probably um, the last station that I was with uh, my mom and dad in, and we were in Germany, and that was that was really nice. Ooh, Oktoberfest! How fun! All right, so dish is the food here in Angel Grove better or worse than the food was in Germany? It's different. I wouldn't say it's better or worse. It's just different. Um, it's more, more authentic there, obviously, but um, I mean, it's just, it's just different. Ooh. So do you have a place in Angel Grove you like to go out to? So you take your art there and you like have like a snack and you look really cool in your scarf while you're eating? Like, cause there's Ernie's Juice Bar, but like, where do you go that's not Ernie's Juice Bar? Or is it all Ernie's Juice Bar? Cause Ernie's Juice Bar is pretty hot. It's a pretty good spot. I do like Ernie's, um, but my favorite place to go is um, there is this little uh, private beach. Um, I like to go out there and paint, and my friends and I will go out there and have bonfires during the summer. Oh, yeah, the beach up north, the one that's all haunted. How neat. Ooh, are you a ghost girl, Jade Russell? Uh, no, not really. Um, I've... We, We've never really seen ghosts out there before. We we just like we just like the atmosphere. 
Oh, uh, well, ghosts would be the least of our problems. We're in a weird city. Like, it's okay to say that. We all know we're in a weird city, right? It, it is a weird city. Yeah, have you had any weird things happen to you since you, like, moved here? And she, like, pauses and, like, every weird thing that's happened kind of flashes through her mind. And it's just, <laughs> you know, no, no, not, not me, not me personally. Well, that's okay. All right. So there's a couple more questions here. So we've got like four or five things. So, so school is a big part of what we do right now. Eventually we're going to all be graduated. Then school won't matter anymore, which will be really super neat uh, because then I can work at the big news anchor in the city. So when you're at school, is there anything you really need? Like, do you have like a special Lisa Frank Trapper caper or anything like that? Do you like RuPaul's Drag Race stuff? Like what kind of stuff do you carry with you when you're at school? Um, and at this point, Jane's getting very confused because she is not like she carries her books and she carries her art supplies, but she's not like very up to date on like most things that most teenagers are into like that. Um, so she's just like, um, well, I mean, I, I carry my books and I, I always have a, a sketching pad and, and like pencils and charcoal and stuff. Is that what you mean? Ooh, charcoal, pencils, and charcoal, and sketch pads. You're such an artist. It's so cool. We're so excited to see what you're going to do. You've, you're going to take your uh, you're going to take your winnings from the test, and you're going to the Art Institute, right? Did I get I that am. right? I heard from an anonymous source. Oh, you have an anonymous sources? Um, yeah, that that's what I'm going to do. Yes. Oh, that's super cool. So my anonymous sources, right? My anonymous sources also told me that you've been kind of hanging around with some people from the baseball team. Like they've seen you kind of out and about with a couple of baseball players. Is that, would you say that's accurate? Um, I, I'm friends with one of, one of the baseball players. Yes. Ooh, which baseball player are you friends with? Uh, uh, Brick, Brick Kerrigan. Brick he's Kerrigan. Ah, oh, oh yeah. Okay. So no, Brick is really cool. He's he's one. He's a, he's a super nice guy. Yeah. So are you like in? Are you into sports? Are you become like a sports slash art person? No, not. I mean, I don't not like sports. Um, but it's not really my not really my thing. I don't mind going and like supporting friends, but it's not really it's not really my thing. Ah, oh, that's so cool. So like, you and Brick are friends then. <laughs> yeah yeah but i mean i'm friends with like I'm, I'm friends with cecily you know the 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 really neat like um renaissance fair girl and then i'm i'm, I'm friends with a bunch of different people ah oh, that's so cool it's so cool to be eclectic so like i don't know cecily how would you describe cecily to like our viewers slash listeners here at Angel Grove Morning News, like if you could describe Cecily in like three words. And I don't know that I can do, I can describe her in three words. Um, fabulous, smart, and resourceful. Oh, that's super neat. Like that's super cool. So, so like, is she like cottagecore or like banji or like bougie? Like, like if you could give like Cecily like a word. I don't know what any of those mean. Oh, well, well, cottage core is like, you know, a person that's like flowy outfits and kind of hippie and like a 60s groovy love vibe, man. Like fringe. Has Cecily ever worn? Do you wear fringe? Are you into fringe? No, 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 not me. Uh, I mean, Cecily, um, she's just nice. And I mean, she wears like the flowy dresses. I don't know if that I would label her as um i'm sorry you said it was c cottage cottage core it's like cottage the core, core of you is like super chill and the vibe is just like yeah man do what you need to do and let everybody live man yeah i think i mean i think i would say that that's that's cecily yeah that's super cool it's so cool to have like this group of friends you know that are they're just really fetch or whatever they're really they're really there for you like you and Brick hanging out is really cool. Like, so like, are you considering asking Brick to homecoming or anything like that? Cause like, that's kind of a big thing coming up, you know? <laughs> um, well, I, um, we have just, 
we have talked about it. Um, and I mean, we're, we're going to go as friends. Oh, you're going as friends. I, I see how it is, girl. You got to, got to keep your options open. You know, you're, you're really kind of like up on the market now, you know, so that's really cool. But like, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to play with an athlete's heart too much, you know, cause we want them to, we want them to win games, you know? No, no, I didn't. I didn't mean it like that. I mean, I like him. I mean, I don't. Um, what's the next question? And Jocelyn hits the end call button <laughs> right after that. Of course she does. And only in the next, please take another story point for, <laughs> for um, dealing with that very, very gotcha interview. Um, and you'll see the result of that in the next couple of uh, days. Oh, um, I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> So that is uh, the end of the 10 Things You Can't Live Without Ambush interview is the end of this particular episode. I hope everybody had as much fun as I did. <laughs> that was so This was fun. It was <laughs> that was one. really funny. Uh, I will let you know before I end this recording, Cecily, uh, when you demorphed, uh, you don't have the marble, but you do still have the box when you demorph. Oh, cool. Then so I can compare it. Item yeah, it's a physical item in the universe like your morpher, um, but unlike your coin, which can leave your morpher, you don't hear the marble in there, but there's nowhere else for it to be. Um, so just so you know, when you demorphed, you got your box back, essentially. Sweet. So I can show it to Eddie and be like, yeah, look how similar the boxes look. Uh, except they don't because they don't. Eddie's, because uh, the, the red that was on your box shimmered and shook itself off just leaving uh it's kind of weird that the eagle symbol when it sl slid together to give you the flaming eagle accoutrement made a picture of an eagle but now it's like separated again like a rubik's cube puzzle yeah i wonder when mine's going to puzzle up that would be pretty yeah i probably like, shouldn't really think about it too much don't want to here's a hint for happen you eddie happens. A hint for you, Eddie. If you see a glowing marble, grab it. Marble. I mean, that's just a hint for everybody in everyday life. The viewers and the rangers are like, yeah. if you see a glowing marble, grab it. It might give you magical powers. And grab yeah. that marble that you know you deserve out there somewhere. Grab Everyone the marble. Deserves a marble. Grab the marble. That That's our new merch is just shirts that say grab the marble. Grab the marble and have a nice breakfast. And don't do interviews <laughs> with Jocelyn Larson from Angel Grove High Morning News. It's don't a ever, Yeah, don't ever say yes to that woman. All right. Thank you, everyone. And I hope everyone has a great night.